Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and today we're taking a look at Guns of Icarus Alliances. Now this is a preview event prior to launch, so this is pre-release content, so anything that you see here can be subject to change, and any bugs and anything that we notice will probably be fixed by the time uh, the game comes out. But uh, joining me while we're having a look at this is Howard and Matt from Muse Games. So... Yep. Uh, Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> All right, so Guns of Icarus Alliances, right? While we're waiting for the game to start, because we're still sitting in, in in the lobby for now. Um, what's it all about? What's what's the main thing? I mean, we're talking about an expansion to uh, Guns of Icarus Online, which has been around for let's say um, coming three up to years two, now. Three years, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while. So the main things, there are a few different uh, major things happening. One is PvE gameplay and content. So right now in the game that's released on Steam, it's all PvP combat, meaning that ships and crews of players form teams and they battle against other player ships and player teams. And in PvE, everybody was still form teams and uh, you know the crews were still fly together and there would still be multiple ships, but instead of battling against human players, they'll be battling against AI enemies in different missions. And right now there are already three different mission types and there are four maps and we're making a few more. Uh, we're also experimenting with different game modes as well. Um, so there's new PvP content and so with that comes brand new ships, uh, new guns, new bunch of different new enemies that are faction themed. Um, and so speaking of faction, the other component of it is the world and faction progression side of things. Um, so in the game now, there's already a first iteration of the world map and how we're representing different factions. So each faction occupies a geographic territory, has its own culture and ethos and technology that translates to different weaponry. And so as you play these missions, you will... Go, uh, you will collect resources and earn resources that will help you to uh, gain them for your faction to not only unlock uh, faction-based weapons and ships, but also to help with the faction's war effort on the world map. So essentially, it's, there's a large meta game, almost like a board game, an access an ally type of board game, where you get to choose uh, which battle to fight, what territory to uh, pull, pull your resources on against different enemy factions, and you can attack and defend uh, each individual territories. And so there will be seasons in the game, and each season will culminate into basically a larger war. And during the larger conflict, um, essentially, factions could really, like what you do during uh, those war efforts can have pretty significant impact on how your faction does that season. And what we'll eventually do is to have a system where we will record the winning side um, and also the glorious teams and individuals that have done well that season. And so that will be a permanent part of the Gun Seekers lore and history. Okay, so we're, when we're talking about this world map, we're looking at sort of like, I guess, in a similar style to like Galactic Conquest uh, map in like Helldivers and all that. So sort of persistent campaign kind of thing. Um, is that what we're looking at, or is yeah? That... It, the, so the map and data will be persistent, um, but like, it, yeah, I mean, essentially, um, they will be so like the territories can actually change hands, um, and you know, like you can actually affect how your faction battle against other factions by how you do in your own matches and how you want to choose to allocate resources. So yeah, I mean, in that sense, the map and how your faction progress is persistent. Um, but then I guess we'll, we'll uh, you know, we, we won't be able to allow, say, one faction or faction just getting up and annihilate each other. Uh, they'll like, well, well, to have a faction to be completely annihilated. <laughs> so somehow mm -hmm. um, there will be balance to ensure that, you know, the war efforts goes on. And um, following on that, uh, so <laughs> with you mentioned that players can sort of pick factions and all that. Are they able to swap at any time, or are they locked into a faction for a particular season? Or how that's, how's that, how's that going to work? Yeah, they're not... So they can switch allegiance. Uh, they will just be... Um, 
like it will be sticky, but not like totally rigid. Um, so you you will pledge allegiance to a faction, but when you leave a faction, it will come at a cost. Uh, but it's not like so complete that you know that will prevent you from leaving and joining other factions. Um, but there will be a little bit of stickiness. So um, hopefully, people will be committed to a faction. Right, so it's it's probably not going to be a case of players just jumping ship whenever you know their yeah. is losing or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, you. I guess. Um, I mean, if you really, really want to, you can, but it will come at a cost. Right, penalties mm. and all that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, well. I hope hope to see how that, how that turns out because um, games that have persistent universe and all that have been really um, kind of interested me as well. It's like uh, games that I've played in the past, whenever they've had that, it just kind of pulls the whole team effort thing into it. Uh, just thinking back, like games like Planet Side and all that, when they have you know, <laughs> when you try to yeah, exactly. take over the entire continent and then but, uh, alright, so if if we are not able to like lock down let's say the, the map with just one particular faction um, what are we looking at for that? Like, are there going to be safe zones or um, so what we're thinking is that um, the allegiance will change. So like during the war uh, periods, you can eventually there there could be main um, we could we can basically add different dynamics to how uh, factions switches allegiance. So so for example, there could be you know if two factions are strong, there could be uh, two primary factions at war, and uh, the um, the other like you know factions kind of more on the sideline. They can basically um, essentially, in a way, vote for allegiance. Not really voting, right? But like you know, they they can there could be like allegiance switching and and so on. And also like you know the for the factions that are, um, you know that that are being uh, taken more territorially, territorially, will be able to affect the balance so that you know it will be essentially progressively tougher. For example, for them, you know, as a as you know, they're being pushed against their capital, for example. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. That that's something. Um, I go, I've just I go, I guess I've got to see how that pans out, really, because um, yeah, totally. it's it's harder to p kind of picture it at the moment because I'm being attacked by biplanes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figure I'm watching. <laughs> like, man, I'm watching you guys on spectator. Uh, so. <laughs> Alright, so I'm actually um, having a look at some of the uh, guns and ships as well. That have, You mentioned new weapons and new ships coming in. And yep. the ship that I'm on right now, the Corsair. So this is yeah. one of the three new ships that are coming with alliances? Uh, yeah. So and, and we've got two new light weapons as well. Are there plans to be more than that? Or yeah. was or that uh, like later down so the line? Uh, sorry, uh, ship-wise, the... They're all different faction themed. Um, so right now, uh, you see the Magnate and the Crusader as well as the Corsair, and they all represent different factions. Um, so each faction will eventually have multiple ships that players can unlock as they progress through their you know faction upgrades and and so on. Um, and the you know, the weapons uh, are the same. So there is a new beam cannon called Apollo. Um, and the weapon works in. I mean, basically, it's a you know concentrated light beam uh, through a lens array, and essentially you have to train the beam on a target. And as you do, you have less turning arc, so you, um, the gun is more locked. And the the longer you stay on the enemy, the more damage it does. Um, so initially, like it's kind of a logarithmic curve as far as, far as damage output. So like when you stay on the enemy when you shoot the gun initially it does very minimal like damage output but then as you can train the gun uh on a target throughout say you know the the entire uh clip if you will then it would progressively do more and more damage so that's one gun that you guys are seeing and the other one is um the tesla coil um or the electrified coil um and that gun basically it works in um it basically it shoots at a main target, uh, shoots lightning bolts at a main target, main target, and then it hops, the lightning bolt hops, uh, will hop to other enemy secondary enemy targets. So it's really good against uh, planes, for example. 
Right. And yeah. So I'm noticing upcoming, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And upcoming, there is we're working on a essentially a missile cluster, and also a projectile uh, tar bomb weapon. So it, it's kind of cool. I mean, that's one exciting thing about working on PVE is that because we don't have to be as rigid about player um, or conservative about player balance because we can also always um, you know use the AI director to um, dynamically adjust how things are going and match and ratchet up tension. Um, we can actually take more creative liberty with weapons, so which is what we're doing. Yeah, that was actually something I was wor wondering about uh, just prior to playing it at the start of the the night. Um, when it comes to Guns of Icarus, of course, the PvP section of it. So, <laughs> when we introduce new elements to any game that has a sort of um, a fairly balanced multiplayer, uh, as yeah. it is, uh, that always tends to run the risk of upsetting the balance in a very big way. So, what we're talking about now is PvE, where that isn't an issue. So, are we looking at having these things brought into and balanced for PvP as well, or is it going to be strictly a PvE only thing? Yeah, potentially. I think we'll, we'll evaluate each individual weapon, tools. So, well, there are actually new tools that I don't know if you guys tried. They're buff tools, engineering buff tools. Um, they're also new. And uh, we'll look at individual ships as well and just, just to see how they translate. In fact, some of the players, like in, in the development app, we already have the ships available um, for people to test uh, in skirmish maps as well. So they have been trying them, and we're collecting feedback. Um, and so we'll, we'll basically evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis, and if they work well for skirmish, we'll definitely love to bring them in. Um, and if they don't, for example, if, if we find them to be too OP, uh, then we could potentially make adjustments where we'll create you know, alternate versions of the ship. You know, like you, you, It's kind of like different models of the ship. And uh, we might make some balance adjustments, such as like you know maybe gun placement or how many guns to carry on the ship, and maybe just different um, properties of the ship. So, so yeah, it's it's possible. It's definitely possible to bring more content into skirmish, but I think we just have to be pretty judicious about it so that we don't affect the balance. Yeah, definitely, because that is that is a very very tricky thing to to get right when when yeah, new yeah. things I mean, are brought in. I guess we will affect a balance, but hopefully things will stay balanced. <laughs> that is the hope, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially when new guns are brought in as well, because uh, uh, what I've noticed about uh, about Guns of Icarus in particular is that any gun that's brought in it seems to have its own unique way of functioning. Like, no guns right, really right. seem to be repeated, at least not within the same class. So you've got your flat cannon, you've got your heavier cannons, then yeah, you've got yeah rockets and all that and they all function uniquely for their class so is that a trend that's going to continue or are we going to see some slight variations in that as well um yeah i mean i think i think with balance it's more about specialization and so the, i think the more we allow weapons to specialize um and to have their own in just individual use cases that are valid then i think the better off we'll be because i mean ultimately we look at usage of different weapons, different ship builds and ships uh, quite a bit. And I mean, that, that is probably the, one of the biggest piece of data that we analyze. And so we definitely want more guns to be in play and more ships to be used and to have their win rate to be, you know, more at, um, say, an expected value or like, you know, as close to average as possible. Okay. I've just noticed in chat just now, um... Uh, it's been mentioned that the difficulty of the mission is scaled depending on how many ships you're bringing in. So we're talking about, of course, the three ship and two ship maps. But uh, when it comes to the actual difficulty scales, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing this is something that's still a work in progress. But uh, right now, I mean, this is what we've called uh, super normal, which is supposed to be easier than normal. And um, <laughs> for anybody watching this video at it, um, later on, there's a lot of activity going on right now. Um, I mean, as an engineer, I've, I haven't stopped moving yet. So, um, it, obviously there's something that's going to be worked on, but when it comes to difficulty, what are you looking at? Like, we have seen a few different enemy types, and uh, it just seems to come in as a sort of swarm. 
that's kind of unpredictable. But w when you up the difficulty, what are we do looking at that? Like, is it just going to be more ships and more planes coming in? Or are we going to have, you know, what else is going to be added into the mix? Um, yeah, there, there are quite a few factors in number of enemies, in uh, the frequency in which they spawn and where they spawn, what they focus on is are definitely factors. Um, so with difficulty, the... What, like as far as difficulty settings, it's kind of like you know there's there are bands of um, you know enemy say strength as far as like their attacking power, your health, your damage output, and so on, um, and maybe like you know how intense the director will um, spawn ships, for example, um, and that does vary with um, the number of ships as well. Uh, so for example, if you play. Uh, three ship versus two ships, there may be more objectives um, and the enemy may be uh, more and maybe tougher um, just because you have three ships. But then within each individual match, once it's started, um, the director, so we build an a, a AI director actually um, to make sure that each match is, there, there's some random element to each map so that you know no match really ever plays the same way. Uh, so within uh, a match, the director will also ratchet up tension based on, like, say, how well you're doing. So, for example, if you're just blowing through the map, um, you know, within the difficulty bounds, the director can actually raise tension a little bit to make it a little bit more challenging. Or if you're struggling, then the director can uh, dial the tension down. And I think right now in uh, today's testing, defense is definitely playing tougher uh, than, I would say, retrieve and uh, uh, assault maps. And I think that has something to do with just our playtest feedback last round because people actually had a pretty easy time on defense. So, so we kind of make the AI target the base more um, instead of um, prioritizing uh, their targeting to the perimeter defensive. So. Yeah, I definitely noticed that. We have had the least amount of luck with this um, yeah, defense yeah. mode. It really yeah. has... <laughs> No matter yeah, which map, because we played in a way, we're using you guys as uh, in a way we're using you guys as test guinea pigs. Too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no. But uh, overall, I say like w the defense mode seems to be the toughest one to to really get get right, for, at least for the players, because I mean that takes a lot of coordination. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's 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 definitely a more coordination heavy map. Um, a lot of times it's expected for the players to basically, for, for example, to split up, to have one ship to coordinate, right? Maybe have both ships defend for a while, for a bit, and make sure you clear the enemy wave, um, and then the one ship can go out into the one of the lanes to um, essentially destroy the enemy outposts or drills to bring the cargo back. Um, so there, there is definitely a lot of coordination, whereas assault, um, assault is tactical in a sense that you know, you can have, so for instance, if you play three ships on assault, you can have two ships do a frontal assault and attract most of the AI. Uh, and while uh, a third ship sneak around the flank and try to get into the base and um, attack the enemy from the rear. So you have that kind of tactical um, stuff at play in assault. But not, because in uh, defense is really the, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, a balance between defending but also attacking. Um, in that, I, I agree. I mean, it does require the most tactics. Yeah, and in comparison to the other modes as well, like Assault and uh, Retrieve mode, it, it does seem to just have that extra level on top of it. It's almost, uh, and I've heard this described in mid-match as well, it's very, um, very MOBA-like, because you do have to have that sort of balance in the team just right, and that coordination yeah. there. And even with good teamwork, you have to have that sort of team composition just right. You need it, yep. the ships that yep. can do the job. Uh, it, it really just it gets very interesting then because I'm wondering when when we when we set up like when we set up teams for PvP. So um, mm -hmm. the people that normally play with me, we tend to go with the two goldfish formation since we with that with that setup you have the most amount of versatility just because of the the um the weapon placings 
But then, looking at it this way, if you, could, if you were to bring that setup into a defense match, it really just comes becomes a case of uh, you don't have the amount of hit points, you don't have uh, weapon mounts that are that have enough firepower in the directions that you need them. And when the enemies swarm in there, you're just going to get caught out completely. And that's where you really need to think very hard about the uh, sort of team composition. And I really like that. Yeah, and, and maybe you... So, for example, if you have um, a, a ship composition that values speed, then you might want to have a different tactic where it's not just uh, brunt force against brunt enemy force. So then what you can do is to equip one of the uh, goldfish, for example, with care nades, uh, or with lumberjack, mm -hmm. so that you can basically dictate an altitude and basically just knock the enemy ship's balloon out uh, over and over, which actually I found to be um, effective um, in, you know, in, basically uh, sometimes um, at least, so that I can try to dictate an altitude and basically knock out all the ship's balloons and try to suppress them, right, while the other ship goes around and use speed to uh, get at the enemy drills and bring the objectives back to base quickly. Um, so I think that's what we have been working on as far as balance goes, uh, is try to find that medium. Before, I feel like, say a month, two months ago, um, in the earlier patches, the enemies are really easy to destroy. So a lot of times the players just use, um, you know, a straight armor piercing and um, you know, armor killing combination and try to kill as many ships as possible. But the balance changes that we were making based on players' feedback and based on what we saw was that we will be able to make the enemy ships a little bit harder to deal with, both in maneuver and both in health, um, so that they're just individually tougher. And so then what that does is that it op hopefully opens up um, different weapon choices so that disabling enemies, um, so knocking out their engine, knocking out their guns, or popping their balloon becomes more viable strategies. And that's that's another thing that I've noticed as well. What we're talking about here is uh, an AI airships that are aren't just you know um, a hitbox with hit points. We're we're talking about uh, enemies that have the same sort of modules that you have, and you have to think yeah, about exactly. them as though they were other players. And yep. I think that just adds so much more to the complexity than than you know might first, first be apparent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you still sort of, even though it's PVE, you still have to think like PvP in some aspects as well, which is is definitely uh, something I like. Um, yeah. So there, there, there will be a variety, and with planes, they're essentially just cannon fodder. You know? <laughs> they, they do, they do damage if they approach you. Uh, the atmospheric then... cannon fodder, fodder. I'll give them that. Yeah, uh... I, mean, I think they're, they're not to be underestimated, but that they're also easy to destroy. Um, so if you pay attention um, before they die bomb you, for example, you can actually knock them out pretty easily. Um, but so that's kind of the risk, re risk and reward with the planes. But the enemy airships, especially the enemy boss ships, definitely have um, it's somewhere between you know just an AI enemy and a player ship. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I I can definitely see this being something that I'm going to spend a lot of hours in. But before we get to that, oh. of course, it has to. It has to come out first. So, what's the what sort of release window we're looking at? <laughs> yeah. When is this coming out? Yeah, that's that's the question. Um, I think what, with release dates, we don't really have one yet. And that right now, the focus is first get the core systems done, get all the faction and um, role progression in to full players to test. And what's not what you guys haven't seen is the character progression part, and that will involve. Not necessarily a skill upgrade, but you know, essentially, we'll, you'll be able to unlock different player skills, and the skills are, will be designed so that they will tailor to more specific play play styles or use cases. Um, so you'll have um, essentially more specialized skills, and with just varying trade offs. Um, so that aspect we haven't implemented yet. Um, and we have a few more maps, guns, ships, um, as well as all the character gear that are still yet to be uh, put into the game. I think once we do that, then we can. St uh, the next step will be to do 
um, pre-ordering on Steam and potentially enter into Alpha. And after Alpha, hopefully we can just take a lot of player feedback and improve on the game and polish it and release it. So I think without part, part of the part of release stage is just that we want to make sure we incorporate a lot of uh, players' feedback and have um, just basically reserve a time that's not like rushed in terms of testing. So, and then I think once we are in that process, we'll be able to gauge release date better. But um, it should be sometime next year. <laughs> well, I mean that that's still um, that's still a release window to look at. I mean it's 2016, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. TBA 2016. All right, so we're looking at uh, towards uh, sometime in uh, 2016 when uh, we might be seeing alliances finally. Uh, be available to the public, but uh, well, what sort of uh, price point we're we looking at? I mean, if I believe it has been mentioned before, uh, uh, what was it, fifteen uh, dollars for for the uh, expansion on top of the yeah. base game? Uh, yeah. Is that going to include any sort of um, bundle uh, together with the base game or something like that on Steam? Or yeah, uh, is it sold uh, separately? I think how that is still we're still working with steam but tentatively yeah it will be so the people for the people who own the game now they will be able to get the dlc for alliance and for people who are buying um just you know buying the game anew they will be able to just buy everything at once all right well it should be it should, should be you know, a lot easier or less confusing <laughs> i hope and then we'll have the soundtrack because i mean the uh, alliance essentially has it's um, entirely new soundtrack and uh, you know all the the new like wardrobe and everything and we'll include that into um, the game as well so when people buy it they will you know, have that be available to them all right very nice very nice well thank you very much for uh, joining me uh, today well we're taking a look at the uh, upcoming expansion for guns of Icarus online uh, thank you Matt and thank you Howard for joining uh, and talking to me all about this. So uh, all the best for uh, the year ahead, and I uh, hope to to see uh, alliances soon. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for joining us.